Now that we have the STI to the point where it's actually running well, it's time to get this thing ready for the dyno and get this thing ready for the street. So we have a checklist of things that I've written on my whiteboard that we need to do today, and I lost my dry erase marker. We need to A, fix the bumper fitment, install the bumper quick release latches, wash the car, put the ECM away, align the car, test power steering, go out, drive it. So I wanna try to get through that entire list today. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but we're gonna do what we can. So the alignment is one that I've been putting off. I just, I hate aligning cars. It's not fun. Like if we're just being honest, it's just not a good time. I gotta do it. The lift should make it a little bit easier. I'm gonna set up a string alignment on it. We'll do it that way. With the front bumper, I need to fix it. I don't know what the hell is misaligned, but something is misaligned. When I come up here and I close the hood, you guys can see it. There's like all this gap of seal here and then it's like the hood overhangs the bumper on this side. So it's like this side of this guy needs to come outwards more. I don't know what is happening there, but we'll have to figure that out. We got these nice quick release latches for the bumper. I think I got these from like JDC. So that way we can fix ah, the bumper fitment a little bit more. Also the parts pile for the 22 or the 23 WRX is piling up. We got some, ah, we got some cob goodies showing up in a couple of days and we'll start on some 23 WRX stuff also. So I think where I'm going to start on this list is the front bumper and install bumper quick latches just to get those out of the way so we can get this kind of situated. So what I think I'm going to do is just pull the bumper off. I think I'm going to try to figure out why this is misaligned on this side and just kind of, I don't know, let's take it all apart and see what's going on. Okay, so what would be causing this to sit too far in? It's like all of this needs to come out. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Okay, hold up. Hold the phone. Hold the freaking phone. So put you in here. This side needed to go in, this side needed to come out. So now that we've got this adjusted, we can start working on the other portions of it. So uh, come to find out this cross brace right here does disconnect from the actual brackets that bolt up to the chassis down here. So you can loosen these, get these where you need them, bend this a little bit to get it to sit where you want, and then you should be good. Next up, we're gonna start on jumping over to those quick release side latches. So I've been playing with one side right here. I took off the stock bracket, which normally would sit something like that. We're gonna be using these little studs with the little quick release guys. So I don't know the best course of action to do this. I think I'm gonna get the height set on this to figure out where it needs to sit on the bumper. And then we can like put a little piece of paint pen or something on here to be able to mark the inside of the bumper here so we know where to drill the hole for everything to get it all to line up properly. So let me kind of figure this out because I'm even gonna be honest, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. And I got this figured out to a point where it kind of works for me. So I've got this guy here. There is still a small gap here. There's just nothing I can do about it, man. As I like, I can push this in as much as I want, but it's like this headlight bracket is out of alignment because this fender did come off a crash car. So I think this fender is a little bit tweaked right now and that's what's causing it. Like you can see like it's digging into the headlight up here, but I think that's about as good as I'm gonna be able to get this corner. This corner is the only one that's problem child. The other side is not so much a problem child. The fender flare alignment will be fixed because, God. I need to get some hardware flares, dude, because they just keep pulling out, but the flare will line up with there. Once that is bolted together, I'm just not doing EX. The bumper's not coming off permanently right now. Uh, this side should be pretty easy. What I found to work best is there's a little square back here and I'm getting a little dowel piece, this guy, put in the square, getting it kind of marked out where it needs to be. These I had to bend a small bit for them to be able to like fit up with the bumper. It doesn't look terrible. I mean, I, I don't love it, but it's better than having rubber bands on there and it holds my bumper on. Not too bad for the quick latches. Probably should have got black so they blend in a little bit more, but it's whatever. The gap is a little bit bigger than I'd like, but you know, there's not much I can do about it. I tried to push this up as far as I could, uh, but that's pretty much just where I could get it to sit. The problem I was running, running into was up here is hitting the headlight. So it's all right. The main thing here is just so the bumper doesn't fall off. The bumper will not fall off. It is pretty secure with those guys on there. The gap between the hood and the bumper is now fixed as well. And we got that one on. So now that we have a bumper that won't fall off the car, 
we're on the right track. We can go ahead and cross two things off our list now. Fix bumper fitment, install bumper quick latch. Now we got, ah! Okay, now we got wash, put ECM away, align, test power steering, front wheel studs. These I'll probably do on a different day because there's only one of them that's bad. So wash, put ECM away, align, test power steering. I may jump up to putting the ECM stuff away because right now it's literally all just in a pile down there with multiple Haltech Elite 2500s chilling in the passenger seat. I'll drive it to Subaru and get an alignment there and we'll just baby it down there. So uh, let me actually just jump to putting the ECM away right now. Let's put the ECM away, let's pull it out, let's give it a wash and then let's go drive it around a little bit and see how it does. It has been a year since I've washed this car. Last time I washed it is when it blew up, right before it blew up, I should say. So it has just been collecting dust, dirt, grime, crap for so long. So in order to wash the car, I need to put a big towel or a big blanket on the inside or underside of the hood. I need to put a couple rags in the exhaust here and then we are good to go to wash this thing. So let me get Scrub-A-Dub-Dubbin. It has been far too long since I've seen this poor, poor soul all cleaned up. PI is looking mint, all cleaned up. It's been a year since this thing has had a wash. I gotta put a big blanket in the engine bay every time I go to wash it. So I may try to drive this thing home today. We're gonna do a couple test things around the complex real quick, see how it does. I'm gonna make a couple changes in the ECU for the car to read CAN bus, so that way uh, we have power steering and everything like that. But I, I have trust issues with you. Okay, I, I trust this car about as far as I can throw it, which actually I trust this thing about as far as I can drive it, which right now has not been that far. So, I would like to drive it. I'm just scared of it. Because if I drive it back to house, I can just take it to Subaru tomorrow and have them align it. I don't know if they'll align it. I'm pretty sure they will. I don't see any reason in the world why they wouldn't align it. They align some of my other cars, which are much lower, but so I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. So let me get it started up, if it'll start up, because it does have issues starting up. And we'll, so we'll kind of go from there. I want to let it idle for a little bit, see what coolant temps hang out around, just things like that. All right, one thing at a time. Power steering. Damn 
So I got the STI back up on the lift. We have the power steering rack accessible. This is what I kind of need to access right now. The car wants to pull hard left when driving. So it makes me think that the steering rack is not fully centered and it needs to come this way a little bit. So what I need to do is come up in here, disconnect the steering rack linkage right up here, try to spin it a little bit to try to get the rack somewhat more centered. Once it's somewhat more centered, I'm gonna have to mess with the tie rods again. You guys can freaking see it. There's a, there's way less thread on this tie rod than there is on this one. So let me try to fix this and then we'll try to figure out the small little oil leak that it's having. It's either the oil feed or the oil drain. It's one or the other. I think it's the oil feed because I'm not seeing poop down here for any leaking oil. But aside from that, man, this thing drove phenomenal. It's the best it's ever driven. Responded well, full electric power steering. Everything worked flawlessly. So let me see if I can't fix this rack. You're totally good to start it. Just start it. Start it and rev it to the moon right now. <laughs> Oil return was a little bit loose, so I tightened that. I think I fixed the steering rack. Uh, we'll, we're, about, we're about to go drive this thing around again, test it. Uh, I charged the GoPro so I can actually bring the GoPro with me, but I wanna see kind of what it does. I wanted to try to drive it home today, but I don't know how much fuel is in this because we still have to calibrate the fuel level sensor, so we'll do that tomorrow. So I'll kidnap a couple of those uh, fuel containers up there, bring them back to the house with me and fill them up on the way here tomorrow. We'll put fuel in it, we'll calibrate the fuel level sensor, and then I think at that point, I will be ready to start driving this thing on the road. Pretty much dyno ready at this point. Dude, it's pretty much done, aside from the exterior, which I just did decide I'm gonna wrap it after washing it. Dude, the paint has so many defects in it. Not only just these rear quarter panels, but the doors, everything else. So I think I'm just gonna wrap it. It'll be, it'll just be better. It'll, it'll look better. I can't afford a full paint job right now, so. I'd rather have it look half decent with a wrap than kind of shit decent with a bad paint job. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. Let's go drive it. Now let's see what it wants to do. power steering wow. now it just wants to turn left way easier than it does right okay so i don't know why but that's a problem for later is your sink issue pretty yeah. good solid it happens on cranking sometimes but aside from that not often when are you gonna start doing some pulls you gotta terrorize this place i know i gotta calibrate fuel level tomorrow so i gotta go get gas uh wheel speed works off of the wheel speed sensors now yeah so you that vader next week Huh? Are you hitting up Vader next week for some tuning? On the 23 WRX. Oh, shit. This will really? be a little farther out. Yeah. Maybe like two, three weeks. Hell yeah, bud. All right.
fucking men. I almost killed that. for a little bit. We'll see if she's smoking. Let it idle for a little bit, pull it back in, jet out, grab some fuel and come back tomorrow to calibrate fuel level. All right guys, so that's all I got for you guys on this one. We're gonna calibrate the fuel level in the next video. Josh is gonna send me the values for the Haltech, the fuel level sensor for uh, low and full, and then we'll verify that with some fuel. I just, I woke up this morning and just feel like crap. So I came over, I got the STI driven out. I drove it out because I'm not pushing this car anymore. Got a couple pictures of it for some thumbnails and drove it around the complex more. It's driving great. It's doing fantastic. It's a little bit rough on cold starts, but as to be expected, the next time I do a cold start on it, I will get a data log, send that to Josh. Uh, I know since this video is titled STI is now dyno ready or what, something along those lines, the STI is dyno ready, but the dyno is not ready for the STI, if that makes sense. So uh, there's some dyno things going on. I don't know if I'm allowed to say or not, but there's some dyno things going on. We're about a month out from being able to get on a dyno, so we're gonna be doing some e-tuning with Josh in the STI over the next couple of weeks until it comes time to get this thing on the rollers. So. Big hyped for that. That's all I got for you guys on this one. If you like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button. Turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, cyan, whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be able to put it in one of these corners, no idea which one quite yet. But with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.